So here we are. Where are we exactly, anyway? We are in Essex. <laughs> <laughs> it's Berkeley Farm, which is just 10 minutes away from Hainel Station. And uh, I keep bees here. And this is my little laboratory and where I do my experiments. <laughs> what I'm doing now, I would like to prepare uh, my smoker because I want to check one of the hives inside. And uh, we had a little situation there a few weeks back and we should have new queen laying eggs now. So that's, that's our little plan for today. Not the best thing to do to bees, but they oh. think it's fire. They fill up their bodies with honey and they cannot sting you. So they become more preoccupied with uh, getting their resources inside for in case of evacuation. That's how we trick them into not to sting yeah. us. <laughs> I would recommend such outfit like I'm wearing now to work with these bees, but today is really hot and uh, We'll take our chance. <laughs> we would like to check what's going on inside of this hive. We expect virgin queen to be mated by now and uh, we would like to see some eggs. That, that's actually part of these beds that I formed. That's what's happening underneath of each of person who comes here. Uh, there are four hives underneath of each of the bed and uh, Roughly around 50,000 bees in each of them, so we, it totals up to 200,000 uh, per bed. And we've got two beds, so 400,000 altogether. Let's give it a go, we'll see how they behave themselves, because it's a hot day today and they don't really like this type of weather when people bother them. But if they're nice and calm, we will do other check. That's where bees uh, store their resources. They grow their babies here as well, raise their babies and everything is happening inside of the beeswax that they produce naturally, it's, they've got special glands that produce beeswax and they seem to be really nice and calm, it's, it's a good sign that they are calm it means that they have a queen because usually if queen is not there they are very very grumpy yeah, and these hives, they have to be in the, the best possible condition because mm. this type of therapy, it requires strong families, strong hives. I absolutely loved it. I, um, I didn't have an expectation going in. I, I really didn't know what, what to expect. And literally within moments of just lying down, on the bed, I just felt my whole body relax. I could really, it very quickly, I was just overwhelmed by the, the humming and I felt my body just sinking into the bed and my head sinking into the pillow. I could really feel vibrations all over my body and my hand became very hot and tingly, sort of little things started happening in my in my body just sensations and and heat and um, very quickly I was in a very deep most meditative state and I found some answers sort of coming to me which I hadn't had that clarity and I think it was just because I was so relaxed that I was able to my mind was able to just switch off and you can see some clarity and um, I had had some sort of pains in my stomach and, and ovaries and um, at one point I, I turned around so I lay on my stomach with my, my ear on the pillow and, and that was really wonderful as well. I could really feel the, the humming and the vibrations all in my stomach and my heart and, and I think because I had my ear to the pillow I could really hear, hear the bees even more so and um, again just totally, I just feel completely relaxed. very calm and, and happy. I'm just so grateful to be invited here by Flad and I think he's doing something really amazing. It gives people an opportunity to experience something that they wouldn't normally, you know, ex experience. And um, 
even in the caravan, just to hear the wind and smell the wood and the bees, the whole setting. And then Vlad played the flute and some chimes and the whole thing was just magical and relaxing and really wonderful experience. I feel very healed in a way of some anxiety and stress and I would definitely, definitely come back and do it again. And I'll definitely be buying some honey. <laughs> First of all, when I laid down, I was very aware of my own heartbeat and uh, it seemed to be pulsing through my body and as I every breath that I took I felt myself go a little bit deeper into relaxation and um, I was also very much aware of like a white noise and uh, it's quite therapeutic in as much as it's um, it's like a detuned radio or uh, or sleeping beside a like a, a river you can't quite make out whether it's a uh, a hum of a river or uh, but it's not obviously actually the bees so that helps you drift off into a meditative state very quickly it's uh, very balancing that's what I felt very balancing harmonizing and regulating I think would be my top three words okay, so yeah I just want to check this hive because we had some frames to be dried out. I extracted honey, but there were leftovers of honey on the frames. So we're gonna have a look what's going on inside. Yeah, that's a nectar they bring, uh, they collect from flowers and they uh, bring them, uh, bring it to the right humidity. And when it's less than 18%, uh, they cap it. Then honey is ready. But it takes long process before we can enjoy it. Yeah, let's have a look what's going on next floor down because this section is for honey and one below have a queen excluder and that part is for brood where they take care of the baby bees this is an nursery and the reason i use this mesh is to stop queen going up ordinary bees can go up but queen cannot go through these gaps so i always know where my queen is yeah, not too bad today you can see there is a bit, little bit of brood and honey around it. This is a section with brood. With honey. Any not born babies yet. And the rest is honey. If we are lucky, you might even... Oh, here she is. Look at her. Here she is. When you see queen, when you meet your queen, then you know. Yeah, that, I, I've, I've started beekeeping um, like four years ago. And... Uh, really hooked me but I came to the point that it's it's quite expensive and time consuming hobby and to move it into something like to make my living with beekeeping in traditional way honey and bee products uh, it's, it's too much hard work you know it's you need to have hundreds if not thousands of hives and it's really hard work uh, and then I, I just remembered that in Ukraine people, beekeepers, they build those huts, they uh, create small structures, fit two, bed, two or three beds in here, fit beehives underneath of, the, of those beds, and they uh, offer it as a therapy, which is, now I know which is effective. Before I was a little bit skeptical, but I was... I decided to build one, one for myself. That's exactly what we experienced before in, uh, in that caravan. So, uh, yeah, and nobody does it in UK, and I thought it's a great idea, and I, and I like it. That was it. Well, I'm a beekeeper, and I met Vladimir quite recently, and he has taken beekeeping. He's gone to a lot more depth than I have. Vladimir invited me up here to pick up a virgin queen for one of my hives. And whilst I was here, he showed me the bee caravan and the bee therapy. And I, as I sat down, I placed an intention, bring it to mind. And as I lay down, 
this muscle spasm in my back literally just just twinged and reminded me that it was there. And I was in there only 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, I, I got up and didn't think about the back spasm. About an hour later, I realized there was no pain. And then the next day, there was no pain. And then the pain hadn't, didn't, hasn't come back since. That was a few weeks ago. But um, it was very, very relaxing. The, uh, it has a, when you're laying in there, it's rather like a long haul flight. The, the sound is like in an, an airplane cabin. Just this, you can hear the hum of the motors or the engines, turbines. And I think at the moment the bees are fanning the hives to, to dehydrate the honey, to take the moisture out of the honey so they can seal it for storage. And the volume is particularly loud because there's a honey flow on at the moment. So I moved on to the farm in 95 and one of the things we discovered on the farm in the woods was some beehives, about, there's about a half a dozen, and one had some bees in. It was fairly wild at that point, and we were told that there had been a beekeeper, but as often happens, beekeepers die and their, their equipment gets left and their hives die with them. And I was fascinated, like most people, they, they see these images of beekeepers not wearing any guards or bales. So I immediately lifted the lid and started playing with them. And I think the first few times I checked out the bees, it was with no fear, and just lifted the lid to check out what was going on until I got stung. And then I invested in a bee suit and I, we just came across a swarm. Someone met, called me up and said there's a swarm on, on a branch and I never, I'd never seen a swarm at this point, but they literally, if they're on the wing, there's just a cloud of bees on the air. But when they settle, it, it's like a, a football just hanging of bees, a solid football of bees hanging on a branch. And these happen to be at low height, so I knew roughly how to catch them. I had the hives ready, so I just snapped the branch into a box took them to the hive and just poured them into the hive and, and that was my first hive. Beekeeper's biggest challenge is stopping them swarming because if, you, if your hive swarms, half the bees leave the hive and, and it's suddenly weak and they can't collect honey. And if it swarms once, it will probably swarm four times. So it goes half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth and you're left with a very small hive. A strong hive is about 40, 50,000 bees. So you could be left with less than 10,000 very quickly. I've been working with energy for the last six, seven years. Initially went into Reiki um, healing, but from travelling gone into intuitive energy healing and theta brainwave work as well. And um, actually for me, this experience, it puts me instantly, it takes me out of the, the thinking brain and the auric field of the thoughts, 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 and I go really deep into the, the kind of horror um, the, the space of nothing and um, I find it very hard to have thoughts when I'm in there which is really powerful to allow the energy body to begin releasing things um, and yes I've you can go and, and share healings with energy healers or masseuse or, or whoever and, and you can get so far but this is really instant for me and um, yeah I kind of get the sensation of it's very warm, but you get the sensation of the bees almost scanning what doesn't serve, moving through my body. Um, and last time that I came, I could feel them in certain areas where I've had trauma in my neck over the years. They went straight there, and they moved to other places. They moved down to the ankles, which I've been told I had some sort of energetic trauma as well. So it was all kind of adding up. And then had this beautiful moment where, and it happened a few times today, where I sort of slip into almost like the void where I'm totally weightless. And it's almost like I've fallen through the wood into something and then I'm just floating. And it's really beautiful, like you're just sort of not here, but you're in the astral or something and you're just, just kind of floating. I had, um, the last time I had these, almost felt like pinching sensations on here in certain areas on my finger. Um, and it felt like they were always drawing, something's being drawn out. And I had that again this time. Um, not as strong, but there was definitely like a, a little, like a very, not even like a sting, but just a, a little pain. And then it, it sort of going. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very hard to describe because it's so subtle. And when I first, Added explaining that he was going to be doing with this, I imagined this sort of cage with the bees all around you and it being deafeningly loud and a little bit scary, but it's so gentle, it's really, really gentle. It's like how kind of nature does things that our energy is probably meant to be a bit more gentle and considered and present, and the rushing of everything 
gets us into a flow that isn't in harmony with nature and what this experience does for me is it brings me back into theta state out of thought and into a rhythm with everything so you kind of come out and you're just sort of breathing with the trees and the sky you just feel very connected to everything let's ask their permission and have a quick look inside here they are you see they're filling up all the space a few months back there was nothing inside just bees the way they build comb, they hang on each other, they create like mesh and hanging on each other, they build it in the air, suspend it. Uh, I think they are pleased that we opened it a little bit for ventilation. But they usually get a bit unfriendly when I open back door. This is my back door, honey door. Yeah, when they fill everything up, I will take a little bit of honey, maybe a couple, few, couple last leaves. But before that, I leave them alone. I'm not going to touch them. To begin with, um, when I entered the caravan, the first thing I noticed was the smell. It was warm and sweet with musky undertones. And then I sat down and I was very aware of the vibration in the caravan and how soothing it was going over my body. I just sat there for a while and listened and, and took it all in. And then I lay down and closed my eyes. And the next thing I noticed was the sound of all those bees buzzing. And it didn't sound like buzzing, it sounded like running water, rushing water. And most of the sound was rushing water but every now and again I caught the sound of like, trickling water as well, so the two sounds combined um, was quite lovely and it sort of like lulled me into a, a trance, into a state of peace and um, I closed my eyes and relaxed my body and um, the vibration of the bees was, just, uh, was going through my body and it was awakening my, my chakras um, and I felt my whole body vibrating and then I fell asleep yes I fell asleep upon waking I felt very relaxed very very relaxed and I sat up and I looked out of the window and I watched the bees flying and it reminded me of the, the way they were moving it reminded me of the cup the free cup game and you have you have to guess where the prize is and they were all moving like this um so it's, it's a mystery you try to keep track of one bee and it, it seems to disappear in the melee um so that was lovely too i would like to add that um i would recommend this therapy uh, especially those of uh, anxious mind and body because this this therapy I feel addresses the whole body the emotional body the physical body the mental body and the spiritual one and bring them all into balance it quietens the mind and it opens the soul it helps us to breathe more easily and subtly and helps us become aware of ourselves and the world around us. Yes, that's it, that's the end. Thank you. I'm certainly feeling a lot happier than when I got here, that's for sure. I feel, um, I feel as though I've come to a space that you can't find just about anywhere else. I mean, you, there's, there's very distant noises, but there's such a, such a serenity. A little, little bird song here and there, but the main noise is either people moving around or the bees. And where else can you find that? That's not something you can just stumble on or go and buy or walk into a shop. So there's, there's something very unique about this. Uh, didn't know, I don't know what to expect actually when I come here. 
I've seen lots of pictures and uh, Vladimir's work. And I know <laughs> for what I've just done for laying down for an hour, I know how much work has gone in to achieve that. And being a carpenter as well, I'm looking around and I can see how uh, what we've seen is probably not the first attempt as well. I'm sure someone's come in, gone, come out again and gone back in again. No, you got it right first time. But, uh, but on the whole, I would I'd highly recommend it if you, especially if you do meditate, if you do wish to be close to nature, you do want a fairly unique experience with nature. Not enough people take a notice of them and realise just how important they are. To be able to get this close to them as well. I wouldn't say I made a connection today, but certainly if I kept doing it, I think, you, yes, I could see how, how you can be seduced by them and, uh, and want to have your own hives and keep them and study them and nurture them understand them which is very lacking with humans and animals in the animal kingdom very much so something very lacking especially in younger generations not their own fault these things aren't taught at school i feel incredibly privileged to be here um, at vlad's amazing bee temple and uh, i came with not much anticipation of anything in particular I just had an open mind and an open heart. I'd had an experience with the bees last year when Vlad was busy building the beautiful space. And this time I can't even begin to relate how extraordinary it was for me, is for me. First of all, I feel frequencies. So I feel a frequency of the earth. I feel the trees. I feel nature. I'm a real nature lover. and to go into a space where there are 400,000 bees is just a miracle in itself. And then to lie down and uh, experience and allow whatever to unfold. And um, I have been experiencing a lot of pain in my left hip, my lower back, my spine. Uh, just a year ago, my vagus nerve was awakened when I went through another process. And so my whole nervous system is, my whole body is recalibrating completely. I'm basically being reborn. And, um, you know, I don't know every day I could be hobbling one day and I can hardly move. And then the next day I'm okay. So when I came to lie with the bees, with their incredible, heavenly, high, high, high frequencies, they know what we humans need. We don't have to ask them for anything. They just know. And I just lay down and relaxed and my body started to unravel. My heart was beating quite fast. I had to reconnect. I was definitely ungrounded. I was feeling a bit jittery, a bit chaotic, because the energies are very intense at the moment for me. And um, so I, my body calmed down, and then I started to feel this incredible flow of energy, which started to wake up from the back of my neck, where the vagus nerve is, all the way down my spine to my coccyx. I also had a vision of, of some beautiful artwork that I could create with the bees because they are the most extraordinary high frequency beings and without them our planet doesn't live and work. So I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to Vlad, really a massive thank you for creating this incredibly sacred space um, where we uh, human beings can come and enjoy and value the extraordinary high frequencies of the bees and the healing that they bring, just happy, really happy.
Hey. Okay.